episode on wildlife wranglers, Roxy and Chaos encountered many animals, including raccoons, hawks, and bears. Here, among the sweeping vistas of Alberta's prairies and foothills, deer are a common sight. They are the most numerous of all of North America's large animals, and subsequently a favorite prey of cougars, wolves, and humans. In 2001, in North America, wolves and cougars combined to kill an estimated three million deer. Hunters were responsible for another six and a half million deaths, and roughly 500,000 deer were involved in automobile accidents. Sadly, it's not uncommon when driving the roadways of North America that you come upon a deer that has been hit by a vehicle. When en route to visit the wolf pup Aurora, we come upon just such an animal on the side of the highway. In the wild, death sustains life. When an animal dies, its body becomes nourishment for other species. But when an animal is the unfortunate victim of a traffic accident, its body can go to waste. As a former employee of the Forestry Service, I know it's important that these animals are disposed of in the proper fashion. When encountering a dead animal on the side of the road, you should always leave it alone and let authorized people deal with it. In this case, the animal will be transported to a government-approved facility where it will be used to provide nourishment for Aurora's wolf pack. We also want Aurora to get a chance to experience the deer, so we try to figure out how to present it to her in a natural way. Let's go have a look at the setting here so that we can figure out how to set it up so it looks realistic when we bring her here, and maybe we can film some natural behavior. We need to find uh, something to make it look natural as to where the deer would have died. So we found this landslide here, and uh, we're, what we're going to do is portrait incorporate the deer into the landslide. Well, let's go get that uh, deer carcass and bring it back. <laughs> this may look a little morbid, and it is, but the thing is, is we found this deer on the side of the road. It's roadkill. It would be a real shame to let it go to waste. So what we're going to do is we're going to use it to feed wild animals with. It is wild meat, so it seems only right. It almost this seems... way it doesn't get, it's not a waste anymore. It's, it's like recycling, sort of. <laughs> I mean, it's either that or something else has to be used to feed it. I don't want to look at you. No, swing hips, sir. It's always sad to see such a graceful animal as a deer meet its demise. But with the scavenger starting to circle, I'm reminded of the natural order of life. This was one of the messages that we wanted to capture when making our film, Cougar Crossings. Today, we're filming back at the Greater Vancouver Zoo. As one of the primary food sources for cougars, we want to capture some generic shots of deer in a field. We position the camera up high to avoid seeing the fences and zoo visitors in the background. With the camera in position, the challenge becomes moving the animals away from the fences and trying to separate them from the other species that they cohabitate with, and to ensure that we do it in a manner that won't spook the animals. Deer have a top speed of nearly 60 kilometers per hour and can leap up to 10 meters. And even with an enclosure this size, a frightened deer could easily hurt itself or a member of the crew. Having finally separated the elk, we're ready to roll. In the end, it proves to be very difficult to maneuver the animals, and we're only able to get a few good shots. Get them coming down through here, you know, 
if they, if they don't continue they, they, and they meander through there, they can just reframe <coughs> at this point. And then we can pick up another one and as they go down. And they can just pick up one from down there, maybe right. coming down there. Or maybe down low as they come down, yeah. and then from his angle. And then from across there. So. That's a good one. But the shooting angle's determined. We erect the perimeter fence and prepare to move the cats onto set. So let's listen carefully. One more time, we'll go through the whole drill. First things first, we're just going to be quiet. We're going to be natural. We're going to squat, we're going to lay low, avoid looking at the cats. Hopefully they'll be operating and, and, and act naturally as they come from where we release them down the slope, and then down here where we'll catch them. Graham will release, I'll catch. We'll do it the exact same way as we did on our last day at Mount Washington. We'll have them up here on a leash, and we'll have the little cages down there. So when they get to the bottom, I can put them in there, and we'll either carry the cages back up, or maybe we can walk them up. They're getting more and more smarter all the time. If they come towards this fence, whoever's close them, Move there. Even two people can move to that part of the fence, stand up in front of them, and they'll turn around and go away. They don't like people. They'll turn away and try and find somewhere else. Don't do anything that could simulate being a prey. Don't say any words because it'll take the attention of the cat. If I say anything or Graham says anything, it's it's it's, it's going to be said quite uh, aggressively because we're trying to stay in control of the cat. Don't take it personally, but listen to us. Everything should be fine. One different factor here is it's not snow, it's hard ground. The cats in the snow were very unsure when they were walking, very slow, and couldn't really jump. Here, the guys can run, and they can jump, and they can, take, they can actually bound over this stuff if they get a run at it. If you think for any reason they're going that way, we'll shut the fence, just shut it. You make the call and we'll do the shot again. Just pay safety always first. Any more questions? Yeah, um, just wondering which side of the fence I'm gonna be working on. I think my wife's choice is gonna be on this side. Coming down, if you need a hand down there, I can get down there quickly that way. Plus I go under camera, I'm not gonna get a shot. Yeah, well, this is a shot. But I'm stealing from out of Africa. What we're doing, we're gonna start on the top of the trees Tilt down, hopefully pick up the cougars with a nice dozy do darling move and follow them down into the river there. With everyone in position, we're finally ready to release the cubs. Here they come. Cougars, like most animals, are creatures of habit. In the wild, they will travel over the same paths again and again. As they patrol their territory, they become more familiar with the terrain, and they learn how to navigate it and use it to their advantage. This is a double-edged sword. It will give us compelling footage in the end, but mean that the crew manning the fence will need to be extra diligent, as the increasingly confident cubs become more difficult to contain. Watch it, Adam. Graham, bring the leads. This way. After a few runs down the embankment, Roxy and Chaos know the lay of the land, and they give us some great bounding shots. We quickly reset the camera position and get some great low angle shots. We'll use beautiful shots of Roxy and Chaos to provide a sharp contrast to the narration about illegal hunting in our film. Many offenders 
poach out of season or over bag limits. Some use night scopes, cellular phones, and aircraft. Others sell wildlife body parts for use in traditional Asian medicines. some footage of the cats running along the riverbank, we set up a high camera position on the other side of the river. This marks the first time that our crew is split into two units, with the camera team on one side of the river and the cougar team on the other. Working beside the fast-flowing Alouette River makes communications extremely difficult and adds yet another complication with the prospect of the cats entering the water. We have to ensure that all parties are ready before we release the cubs. shoot at the riverbank. It takes a while for the cubs to learn the terrain and for the cameraman to be able to predict their movements. The scene culminates with the cats reaching the water's edge and for the first time interacting with the river. As usual, Roxy is pensive with this new experience while Chaos is confident and curious. With Chaos having stuck his paw in the river, we return to the base camp with the idea of creating the illusion of an underwater shot. We use a fish tank and Graham simulates the cub's movements. And roll in and action. Oh, a little slower. Salmon were cut this morning, and now it's a wrap time. They each got paid uh, $500 a day because, you know, they're after trout. I'm sorry, after salmon. Salmon. Got to get that right. Right. And now they're going back. And they're salmon. Bye, salmon. Swim and be free. The next day, we're back at the same location. now introduced to the river, we want to try to show them having overcome their apprehension of the water with a portrait-like shot of them in the middle of the river. We position two crew members in the water to hold a fence, creating a barrier for the cubs, just in case they decide to go for a swim. we noticed when filming at the river's edge. Roxy is more pensive around the water, but Chaos is being his typical bold self, and something downstream has caught his attention. He wants to take off. This isn't going to work. He's going to take off. He wants to jump. Well, Can I just leave the other one there? Okay, stand by. Even though we have the perimeter secured, cougars are excellent swimmers, and we decide to have him set out the shot, just to be safe. Alone on the boulder, Roxy makes herself at home, and she allows us to capture some great insight into her calm demeanor.
practice hunting larger prey. An unsuspecting sapling makes a safe adversary. All types of prey visit the river for water and food. In 1994, public concern was stirred when a hiker and a jogger became the first documented human deaths by cougar in California since 1909. Between the years 1900 and 2000, there were about 60 attacks on humans in North America. There has been an average of two deaths each decade by cougar. Over the same period of time, statistics indicate in the U.S. alone, about 800 people died from lightning, 400 from bee stings, 180 from dog maulings, and 120 from snake bites. In recent years, cougar attacks on humans have risen dramatically, and as a result, the primal fear that many people have of wildcats continues. With the den camera providing great footage of Aurora, we want to make sure the other camera position in the trailer is set up properly. I'll work on this side if you want to uh, kind of clear off in there and uh, open up the window and see your clear shot. I'll try and get this side clear. And let's just see how uh, it looks through the window and how we're going to do this one because this is important. We want to be able to see from the very front how she behaves as she grows up. So just for now, we'll open these as wide as they can go, but we'll t later we take them out. Actually, you know, they, they come out rather easily. You bend them, right? But we don't want to take them out today. Get in really close. Maybe I can even get through the glass panes. Oh yeah, we can. See, look at that. This is a cool little camera. You know what? We can see right in the den. Oh my gosh. I had to record this. Okay, so now we're looking at each other because we're being goofy. With both cameras set up, it's time to take Aurora to check out the dead deer. Hi, Aurora. Hi, Aurora. Hi, baby. Hi, Aurora. How are you? How do you like it here? One of the most rewarding things about working with Roxy and Chaos on Cougar Crossings was introducing the young cubs to natural situations and seeing how they would respond. We introduce Aurora to the deer carcass and watch her reactions. Although Aurora is not yet ready to eat the wild meat, she does seem intrigued by the blood scent of the deer. Well, here in Western Canada, you get all kinds of weather all year round. Now it's raining. So it's time, let's get her back where it's nice and warm. She's actually trying to get some uh, warm from the uh, carcass. <laughs> Let's get her out of the rain. Hi, honey. It's okay, Aurora. That's another wildlife wranglers. Thanks for uh, being with us, and uh, remember that death, though sad, is not always a bad thing. It also gives life to new species that need to survive. episode of Wildlife Wranglers, Roxy and Chaos meet some of the smallest forest dwellers and bask in a beautiful sunset. The art of wildlife filmmaking plays an important role in keeping an eye on the health of the ecosystem and stimulating action to sustain it. If wildlife survives, 
We survive. 